in most of the, the cases uh, were remanded to February 2021. But also uh, the, the SIU also raised certain areas of investigation that must, that they still have, that is still ongoing. So therefore it means uh, uh, having outlined these issues, uh, it means uh, there's still a lot of work that must be done by the interministerial task team in terms of these issues. Then uh, lastly, uh, in terms of processes, in terms of processes, it will be important that uh, probably in order to guide us, the, the, the chair of the other committee uh, must also have uh, a bilaterals, even, even at the level of the of the executives, including uh, both the Minister of, uh, of Justice and Constitutional Development, uh, who exercise oversight over the over the NPA, but at the same time also uh, uh, with uh, regard to the Hawks, uh, they fall under the uh, police uh, ministry. So therefore, also the interaction by the chair with regard to the Minister of Police. Thank you, Chair President. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I see the hand of uh, Honorable Karen Fessa and Honorable Zanda Mel. Um, in that order. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Honorable Chair. I am just a little, I, I do not know how are we going to measure this, the, the intervention. If the committee did not receive the Memorandum of Understanding and the Implementation Protocols, where the INTT with the province sat around the table and discussed what was wrong and where should we start. And then to see if we had compliance from every department, as well as also from the administrators, did they perform according to what the object, objectives and the expectations were. We do not know, we don't have anything of that. So we do not know if they have maybe skipped some of the important work um, that we need to know about in the process because we did not receive these documentation. Uh, I would plead with the content advisor to supply the committee with these documents as well. I have asked that in the beginning, but up, up, till, up till today we have not received that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Zandamela. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, Chair, one of the reasons. Uh, I'm forward, Chair. Is there any interjection? Yes, uh, point of order, Chair. I think the Honorable Zander Mellon might have uh, neglected to change the background on his uh, gadget. If you could just do so, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Why must I change it, Chair? I'm trying to check what could be the reason. Uh, yes. I don't see the, I don't see the, the, the emblem of your political party, I just see your face. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure unless I'm told, I don't see anything wrong with this, unless there is, a, as I understand, there is an emblem or the, the name uh, of your political parties that, that is not allowed, but as matters stand, I don't see anything wrong with that. Maybe anyone who sees anything wrong so that you, you don't problems. I don't see anything wrong myself. If that is the case, then our party political colors um, may be displayed in, in a platform in a committee meeting like this. Yes. So you must please advise accordingly. Uh, thank you, Chair. Like wearing, like wearing a blue tie. Honorable you must consider getting, know, please, 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 get, get, members, getting your glasses. Not. The ones you are wearing are not proper. Yes, look, honorable members, let's not trade an issue out of this. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't see anything wrong. The colors are red, it's okay. I don't see anything that uh, is against the rules. Uh, and then I was asking 
if that is the case, and I don't see anything wrong with this, and proceed on our Zandanella without any other issues. Yeah, no, thanks, Chair. Um, I was saying, Chair, um, one of the reasons there was an intervention, it was because of the deteriorating financial situations in that province. Uh, due to non-compliance and, and various uh, in, in various departments, so we have a report. Uh, we had presentations from Treasury and AGs and, uh, and the Auditor General's report, of which it, those were supposed to be our basis of everything uh, and the and the law enforcement. Now, the law enforcement didn't even go to the AGs report. All that we got is uh, um, issues that relate to municipalities, and we've got uh, we've got a portfolio of COCTA, we've got a select committee of COCTA that has to when it visits those municipalities, we deal with those issues, and the law enforcement didn't even entertain that. Now, one of the worrying things, chair, the, 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 law, the law enforcement in their presentation in last one day. We asked a lot of questions, and they kept on, uh, on telling us that they, they cannot disclose some of the information. And I found that very frustrating and worrying. Uh, signs are there, everything, reports are there, but up until now, they didn't even in this committee and say, you know, that we've arrested uh, so many people and all those kind of things. All that we found, it's, it's a one case that they related to. They are busy with the NPA and then they're preparing that the matter should, should be had in court and all those kind of things. So this is one of the things that are frustrating, Chair. And I think um, we are all disappointed about the law enforcement, how they conducting their investigation. Really, and I don't know, I had one of the members saying that the inter-ministerial team um, has give guidance and I think we, 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 we're not supposed to be at that stage. We're supposed to, as you said, by the 26th, we must table the report. But we, we are so frustrated with everything. I don't know, it's really frustrating. I think this committee, we have to, to come up with uh, something to make sure that we, 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 we we reach. Uh, we, we we are able to to, to, to present that report uh, in the deadline that is, as you said, it's on the twenty sixth. So um, I'm just raising that that, that frustration, chair, and I, I think it's one of the things that we have to look at as a court. Thank you, chair. Uh, thank you, honourable Zanda Mela, uh, honourable uh, Chabele. Thanks, thanks, chair. <clears throat> You know, all these hiccups, if they are not resolved, they are going to end up affecting our, the time frame that we have set ourselves. Um, but if members really feel that they have to get uh, details on who, what, when, where, how, maybe if you want to go that way, maybe we should have uh, let's say apply for a closed meeting. Uh, but is that is it really necessary? That's my question. Uh, we have the like and that is Andamela was saying, the report of the AG is supposed to be telling us where to go and what to do and how to ensure that whatever happened does not recur. Yeah. So I, I, th I think we've got enough information to, to move forward. But if members feel otherwise, then it, it's still okay with me. Thanks. Uh, uh, thank you, honorable members. Uh, I don't see any hand. I also want to make uh, an input in relation to to, to my observations. <clears throat> One is that 
I don't personally think that there was anything wrong with the report of the SIU. I think it was it was detailed. They said to us, we have 44 cases that we are dealing with. And out of these 44 cases, this is where we are in relation to each and every case. And unlike the rocks and other agencies, they were able to tell us all the case numbers. You can go and check that report of the SIU. They were able to tell us the case numbers, uh, where this is, is happening, whether it is in the municipality or it is in the, in the provincial government. They were able to tell us how many cases that they have referred to the NPA, how many cases that they have concluded, how many cases that are pending, how many cases that are on time, and so on. For me, I didn't see anything much, much, much uh, problem with the I, uh, SIU report. I didn't also see, except one thing, with regard to the NPA. The NPA shared with us each one report, and, and this is a status of the of each and every case. Because in my understanding, and, and, and please correct me, but I'm, I'm sure I'm correct. In my understanding, the NPA will deal with all the cases which were referred to them by these other agencies. And, 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 and they were able to tell us out of the 51 cases, this is where we are. The only problem that I picked up with them was that they were slow in terms of finalizing the cases that were before them. But secondly, they didn't tell us the cases that they have withdrawn. For me, that was a limitation and I could pick up that there are a lot of serious capacity issues at the level of the NPA and this they must address. Where I also problems was with regard to, or even the, the, the asset for patient unit. Advocate Batoy told us that when she got in, the, there was no asset for patient unit in, in the Northwest. She has established one is functioning and on top of that they are planning to have a sub office in one of the municipalities I think it's Matasana to cater for the Dr. Kenneth Kamunda uh, they are trying to set up another office uh, in that part of the, of the province and, and, and they were doing work in terms of reprocessing uh, the funds that were missing but my problem with them was with regard to the fact that they lack capacity, they lack capacity to expedite the case because all cases were piling. Whether there were cases from the IPID, whether there were cases from, from, from the rocks, whether there were cases from uh, SIU, they were still considering whether to prosecute or not, or not to prosecute. And I found it very problematic. But another problem with regard to them was that they didn't disclose to us some information. When Advocate Batoy presented to us, he, she, she told us the, the, their effort in terms of revamping the organization, the post that they have been filled at, a, at the higher level, at the highest level of the, of the organization, and the, the, the support that they are trying to give to the Northwest province. But she didn't tell us that three days before, before, before the meeting, that the head of the NPA had actually tendered their resignation in the Northwest up until she was confronted with the point. She didn't also tell us that the head of the commercial crime unit within the NPA was, was arrested uh, two days before the meeting. 
And, and, and for me, I, I didn't understand why they didn't develop that information before. And, but as, that's my view. From my point of view, I don't see any problem with their presentation because as I understand how they work, they work on the basis of the cases that were referred to them by the other law enforcement agencies. The hawks. If you remember very well, General uh, Le Lebea said, these are the cases, 51 cases or so, that we have referred to, 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 the, to the MPA. But there were surely a lot of cases that they didn't share with us. And for me, I found it very concerning that why were they not sharing with us that kind of, uh, of information? My view is all these entities are not reporting to parliament for the first time. They on continuous basis, they report to parliament and they know what to report and they know how to report. But I, I found it very, very odd and strange that they were not reporting as they should to, to this committee so that uh, this committee is empowered with the information and, and it is able to do their work. Now, now, I'm sure when we discuss questions, we can then look at the kind of questions that we, that we, want, to, that we want to pose to them uh, so that they answer those questions in addition to any other information that can come forward. But for me, it is quite important that they must play their cards open. They must tell us what are the issues. They must tell us clearly what are the cases. Why the delays in the respect of these cases? Why are they delayed? Hey, Honorable Javele. Honorable Javele, can you switch on your mic? You switch off your, your video, please. Switch off your video, please. Honorable Chamele. Let me pause a bit so that I try to help him. We will see things that we are not supposed to see. Yes, please. Yes, yeah, switch off your, your video. We will see other things. Now, I was at a point where I'm saying they are obliged. They are obliged to give us the information so that we understand where the situation is. And for me, if there are these cases that were open in 2019, 2018, there ought to be an explanation why, why these cases are not complete why they are not complete in these cases. For me, that is quite important. Now, I want to raise a matter with you, honorable members, as part of the observation. You know, the IMTT has got all these different uh, units and departments that have come into the province to help. Whether it's education, it's health, it's uh, social development, it's uh, all of this. Department, department that I have. <laughs> Treasury and all other uh, departments. Uh, yes. I was about to say, Honorable Chabele must uh, also mute uh, his mic. Now, the point is the point is, for example, when there were problems in the hospitals of the Northwest, the Department of Health, in conjunction with the Department of, uh, of Defense, they took extraordinary measures and, 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 and had people going to the hospitals to intervene. Other departments have done so, extraordinary measures to go and help and support uh, their counterparts in the province, in the, in the province. And I found this working very, very well. But with regard to these law enforcement entities, 
with the work that they do, none of them have reinforced their offices in the Northwest. And as part of what Honorable Wimmer was saying about the capacity of these entities to do their work, I expect the NPA to send more prosecutors so that they, there mustn't be delays in, in deciding on the cases. I would love the Hawks to be sending more people to support the work of the office in the Northwest so that the process is expedited. I would love the, the SIU doing the same, supporting their office, taking some extraordinary measures in order to finalize all of these cases, to finalize all of these matters that are out there. In addition to how they go about giving us a proper information uh, and that they give they give us all the information without hiding any any case whatsoever and for me that is very very much important that they've got to give us that kind of uh, information uh, it must be available to to us and they must be seen to be reinforcing the, their office their respective offices in the northwest province with a view of making sure that they they, they finalize the cases otherwise we are going to, to get stuck I'm raising this point because none of this organization told us that, well, yes, we, these are the measures that we are taking as far as intervening in terms of our mandate of or pertaining to intervention uh, is called. They have not shared us, she shared with us the, the work that they were doing prior to the intervention, which which gives me a concern whether were they really working, were they really doing their job? Because my view is that in, in situations where they are not doing their job, they are not investigating cases, they are not prosecuting the culprits, people will act with impunity. They will act because they know that their cases will not go anywhere. And for me to get a sense about the work that they were doing before the intervention is quite important and it will help us to move forward. I just want to check whether is there any other hand before we wrap up this discussion with some recommendations that we need to make so that it becomes clearer. I see the hand of Honorable Professor. She's the only one and thereafter out of this, we are then going to make a way forward about about what needs to what needs to happen. Over to you, Honorable Professor. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. That is exactly my point of starting with a with a memorandum of an understanding. Seeing that it is stipulated of the effect of the efficient and transparency uh, of this committee and what we must have and must not have. So exactly what you have said about the cases that was brought before us and was discussed that was like ancient stuff. What about the things that already happened in committees in the, in the legislature? Something like the laundromat, the 49 million rand Northwest uh, Development, Development Corporation laundromat app. The money is gone, no, no app. What about things like that? The game donation, the Rob Ferreira, um, re, um, holiday resort that was bought by the provincial government for what and what happened with that thing. So I was there. I didn't over, I didn't oversight there. It is absolutely dilapidated and in a terrible condition. The Nguni cattle donation, the, the Butelezi ambul ambulances, the Nepo Data Dynamics um, um, IT project, and then the millions of rands paid a million rand a borehole what that was paid for boreholes drilled all over um, northwest where our water table is not it's not that deep so why do we have to draw boreholes to, uh, of a million rand and deeper than that it's it's inefficient why was that things like that not because it was why was it not um uh, brought forward to, to us in this committee the type of cases that we're looking for where the money went Question. The question for me would be, 
were all these matters reported to the law enforcement agencies. That is quite important. If, if so, uh, we expect them to tell us uh, about these matters if they were reported. Uh, these are the cases that were registered with them. I was about to sum up. I see the end of uh, Honorable Sidek. Yes, please come before I wrap up the discussion. Good morning, Chair, and good morning, Honorable Members. No, I think, Chair, the majority of points that I wanted to raise, you have actually uh, put them better. And But also, Chair, what is important is that if we as the members of the Admiral Committee are not trusted by the law enforcement or agencies, we might be perceived as if we are hostile towards them. And why I'm saying that, Chair, is that if you look in terms of all the briefings that we have received from the different uh, departments, you'll understand that they were speaking to, to, to specific departments. You know, when we, they will be able to tell us, you know, in terms of human settlements, these are the issues. And in terms of the reasoning as to why the intervention was actually imposed or implemented, there were specific departments that were doing certain things. But Chair, if you look in terms of the reporting that we have received from the presentations of last week, as much as I agree with you in terms of the SIU, that the, the cases that they are currently you know, you know, dealing with, they are saying, they are giving us a number, but they, can, they don't break down those cases you know, and align it to the 10 departments that are currently under intervention. So it would be, easier or better for us as, as, as an adult committee to, to have more information in terms of the 48 of but the number of cases that they are, they are currently dealing with to specify case number one and maybe number them one to 48 and say case number one, premier's department, case number two, human settlement, so that members can be at ease and say the cases that they are dealing with are actually directed to the specific departments. Because 10 departments to be put under intervention is not a serious thing. And we need to actually get to the bottom of it. And also, Chair, the other thing that is also important is that this work of the, of the committee is not work that is starting. They, there were certain recommendations that was made by the, by the fifth parliament in terms of the matters that must be taken you know, up by the law enforcement agencies to be investigated. One would have expected them to say, okay, in terms of the report of the cases that was referred to us, you know, this is where we are. And these are the issues that we are currently, you know, confronted with. But if we don't get that information, it, it will be very difficult for us even to advocate and lobby for additional support so that these law enforcement agencies can actually be supported so that they can actually deal with these cases. Because if a report says in the office of the premier, there were projects that were run for political, politically in an administration, that is a very serious allegation. And if the law enforcement agencies cannot tell us and say, in terms of the 48 cases that we are dealing with, five of them is, is, concentrated, is concentrated on the premier's office then we will understand that these guys are really serious. Because Chair, as we have also said in terms of the NPA, you know, the credibility of the NPA, the credibility of this office bearers in these law enforcement agencies, a lot has been written about them in the media. Some of us might say, no, they, they are there to protect. Some of us might say, no, they are not there to protect. But if they are not transparent in their reporting, then they will justify our thinking about them that saying, no, you guys are deployed just to cover up for politicians. Because chair, some of the people that has been running these departments, you'll find are still members of parliament today. And some of them are even chairpersons of, of, of committees, you know, and, but they've actually, you know, they brought the administration of Northwest, you know, to his knees and nothing has happened. And we want to go, we get to the bottom of it and say, what actually went wrong for the national minister to actually say, let us intervene. What actually went wrong? And who can account for it? And Chair, what is also worrisome for me is that is the number of cases that, was, that has been withdrawn. And the reasoning for that is that lack of 
information of evidence. That is very worrisome. It's about 29 cases, Chair. Now, one, if you don't give me details and give me more information so that I can understand as to why would they come to that conclusion and say, 29 of them, there is, there is no prospect, there is no prospect of, 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 of winning this case. We, we need to get that info, we need to get those information. And also, Chair, I, I agree with you that some of the cases that have been withdrawn by the NPA, I would really say let them re, re look those cases and let them look into it and, and try to, to see, you know, because there were dodgy characters that they have been responsible or in charge of these law enforcement agencies in the North as, as the one that you have mentioned that were, who has resigned, you know. So I think that, that, that's my take, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, saying that I see additional hands, I'll give uh, Honorable Raida and Honorable Muman in that order. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Che, I'll, I'll be brief. I'm, I'm, sorry, very I'm brief. sorry that you are struggling with the, with the cable. Honorable Raida indicated to me that uh, he has got a problem with the network. Uh, where he is. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you can proceed. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, uh, we had cable theft in the area last night, so... Uh, uh, we have towers down and, 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 and internet problems. Anyway, Chair, thank you for the opportunity. I think most of what I wanted to say has been well covered. Um, there are, and from the presentations we had last week, we could see that there were a number of bottlenecks uh, that are taking place at various different levels. Now, you know, so, some of those presentations, for example, that output presentation I felt was disingenuous and, and actually, you know, was more to... To, to mislead us than anything else. Uh, that's just a comment I wanted to make, by the way. But much of the information given in the presentations indicated that there are bottlenecks in the process. And I think we, we're all in agreement that the, the, the flow of cases from a charge being laid through to uh, you know, a court case being, and, and then even the court case being finalized, uh, it, it's just, you know, there's too much of a funnel. We start with a huge number and we end up with one. So um, I think what we need to do is, 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 is detailing with each different layer because frankly, every single um, layer of the process, there were numbers filtered out. So for example, the people that laid the complaints, uh, there, there was a problem getting those complaints sorted out with the police. Uh, you know, finalizing case numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, often because there wasn't sufficient information or, or, or backup documentation. So to have some of the complainants or the whistleblowers detailing what their frustrations are and giving us concrete examples, then having the police and the Hawks and, and, and the SIU explaining to us what their problems are. Is, is it a case of, of, of caseload? Uh, are investigators sitting with too many cases that they're unable to process in time? Is it a case of flimsy um, uh, cases being laid, uh, not enough information coming forward? And uh, is, is it a case of reluctance from municipalities or from the province to provide details and backup information? And then to hear from the, from the NPA as well, give us some concrete examples. What's causing the delays? Why is there such a problem? You know. I'm, I'm aware the justice process is long and slow, but really I was very disappointed with, with the results and the numbers that we heard last week. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Lamima. Thank you, thank, thank you, Chair, uh, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, let me start by expressing an appreciation in terms of the guidance that you have given from the Chair in terms of the, of the analysis and also the way forward. Uh, I do agree with the, with the approach that you have suggested because it makes a distinction between uh, uh, progress made and uh, uh, outstanding issues. Uh, and amongst the, the progress made uh, uh, is the, the information that was provided in terms of uh, 
how many cases uh, are enrolled for trial, uh, uh, how many cases are to be are to be enrolled, uh, how many cases uh, are awaiting decisions from the National Prosecuting Authority, and uh, how many cases are subject matter of investigation by the by the by the hawks and uh, uh, how many cases uh, uh, were finalized in terms of uh, guilty findings and also the the, the withdrawal and uh, and also uh, <clears throat> the work uh, despite the the capacity challenges raised uh, both in terms of uh, uh, the NPA, the Hawks, and also the Asset for Future Unit. Uh, there was uh, an uh, and, uh, elaboration in terms of uh, the effort uh, by the Asset for Future Unit despite those uh, capacity challenges in terms of uh, the recovery of funds from the, from the uh, cases. But also, uh, I think there was an indication from the SIU that uh, there is still work that must still uh, uh, continue in terms of uh, the uh, proclamations that were that that that, that were that were given by the president. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, chair, I think those 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 those, those are the issues that uh, <clears throat> that, that that were uh, uh, outlined to us in terms of progress. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of out, uh, outstanding. Uh, as, as you have correctly pointed out, uh, in adequacy in terms of detailed uh, information provided around 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 uh, the uh, cases that were withdrawn, but I just want to sound a word of caution in terms of in terms of that that uh, the independence of uh, both the regional prosecuting authority and the Hawks uh, as a committee we need to. To, 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 to protect them, uh, uh, particularly given where we come from uh, in terms of ensuring that the integrity of these institutions uh, is, uh, I mean, and, dry, and drives the, the support of this committee. Uh, it is important that uh, 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 we must not give any insinuations that will uh, create uh, an impression that we have doubt in the ability and the capacity of these two institutions uh, to continue doing its work. Hence, uh, I appreciate the point that the chair has raised to say, uh, among the issues that were outlined by uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the head of the NPA was the issue of capacity challenges, uh, uh, both in terms of the offers uh, of the asset for future unit and the and the National Prosecuting Authority in the province. Thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> All right. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members. I, I place the following as the recommendations based on the discussions that, uh, that we had, that we expect that all the law enforcement agencies must use the diagnostic reports which detailed the problems, the crisis, the allegations pertaining to fraud and corruption, which were uncovered by the Auditor General, National Treasury, uh, and the IMTT in general. They must use those as, as a way of looking at the cases. Two, as I said, they must use the findings of the Auditor General specifically in respect of what they have uncovered in, in the process. Three, they must work with the National Treasury, which is conducting the forensic investigations. If you remember, we were informed that uh, the National Treasury has centralized the, the work of forensic investigations and that they must use that they must work with the national treasury to look at the matters that were uncovered in order to assist and to to enhance their work 
I also pick up that the members are saying the capacity of all of these enforcement agencies must be must be strengthened, and that uh, they need additional support in order to fast track the cases in the in the northwest. I also understand the members to be saying they they need to be finished with the guidelines uh, pertaining to the memorandum of of understanding between the IMTT and different departments so that they must understand what was the scope of work, what was outlined in terms of the the work of the IMTT cell. I also understand members to be saying we must use the work of the fit parliament, especially the the the, 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 the legacy report of the fifth parliament because it flecked out a number of issues and 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 in addition to that they also highlighted what is the outstanding work to be to to be attended to but i also understand members to be saying when they give us cases they must give us uh, the number of cases they must specify which department is the case uh, dedicated to, if it is a department of education or health or the office of the premier, they must also include the amounts that are, that are involved. And I also understand members to be saying they need to be furnished with the information about the cases which were withdrawn and the reasons, clear cut reasons why why this case and that case and that case was was withdrawn and and, and that this information must uh, must be provided by the by the law enforcement agencies whilst we request this information we we note and accept that all of these entities are independent uh, parliament must not impose itself on this decision, on, on, on the work of these agent entities. We must allow them to do their work without any fear, favor, or prejudice. They must do their work independent of all of us. Uh, we can only go as far as recommending to them, uh, making suggestions, but we cannot interfere in their decision-making processes. And that, it is a point that is sacrosanct and it must be respected uh, by, by all. And in the course of doing our work, we will remember that, that we, we're doing our oversight function very, very strong, very effectively, but that doesn't mean that we want to encroach in the work of these law enforcement agencies with respect uh, their independence uh, as it were. I pick, up a, I pick up that these are the issues which were raised. Uh, the last issue is that, uh, or the last issue yes, is that uh, we are not going to have our meetings closed. We are not going to have closed meetings. We, as long as we manage these processes well, with that understanding that 